السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آن بہاف آف مرکز صحابہ دا وائس آف اہل و سنا و جماعہ وی پرزینٹ ٹو یو لیسن نمبر ففٹین تھرٹی آف اوور ڈیلی نصیحہ اینڈ ایڈوائس ٹو ڈے و دا گریس اینڈ مرسی آف آل میت اللہ جلّہ والا وی فوکس آن امام ترمیدی رحیم اللہ His name was Muhammad bin Isa. His kunya was Abu Isa. And ulama have objected because Nabi Isa had no father. And there's a hadith in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba that we're not supposed to keep this kunya. But that was in the initial stages. Afterwards, Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa gave permission. Like Mughira bin Shuba was known as Abu Isa among Sahaba. So therefore it is permissible. He had great, great teachers. One of his greatest teachers was Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. And Imam Bukhari told him, Man tafa'atu bika aksara mim man tafa'ata bi. Meaning that are you benefited more from me or I benefited more from you? Allah knows. Meaning that he was such a great student, used to ask questions and so forth. So obviously the teachers is much greater but this is out of humility that the ustad said so so similarly that as a student we also should be devoted dedicated his greatest work remember without a shadow of doubt is his al-jami of imam tirmidhi or the sunan of imam tirmidhi both names are mentioned and remember that he wrote the shab'ail tirmidhi he wrote kitabul ilal He, regarding his madhab, some people say he was Shafi'i, some say Hanbali and so forth. But remember, majority ulama agree that these people were mujtahids and they would not follow one particular school because they had that taqwa piety, they had that knowledge. In this day and this age, you must follow one of the four schools of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Imam Tirmizi's magnum opus, the Sunan Tirmizi, Jami Tirmizi, has many, many distinct in it. Number one is he evaluates every hadith. He will tell you whether he's sahih or hasan or good or da'if or whatever. Sometimes he uses two, three terms for one hadith. He says sahihun, hasanun, da'i, gharibun and words like that. In Kitabul Ilal he discusses these terminologies anyway that is for students and ulama and so forth. Second one is this. In that hadith he will tell you with filbab that which other sahaba have narrated reported this hadith third one very interesting he mentions the madahib and he will tell you that the shafi is muhammad is malik is used this hadith and the other ulama they use this hadith so we must remember that in a case like this we will say that imam tirmidhi rahimahullah brought the fiqh aspect also as well he did not mention imam abu hanifa rahimahullah by name but he said waqala ba'du ahli Kufa, the people of Kufa, some of them. Every way he says this does not refer to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, but it refers to Imam Hanafis in most instances. The next important thing we must know that about Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, at his memory, all might Allah blessed him with. He passed away in 279, so he was born in 209, 70 years old, and he became blind in the latter portion of his life. Some ulama say because of Imam Bukhari passing away, he used to cry so much that he became blind. Subhanallah. Some ulama say because of illness and sickness, Allah knows best. The last issue is we should know that Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, his work has attracted so many scholars and you find that among our ulama, Hazrat bin Nuri, rahimahullah's Ma'arif sunan in six volumes, now other ulama are completing it. And remember, Allama Abdul Rahman Mubarak Puri, he also wrote Tuhfatul Ahwadi, very good. But remember, these are all for ulama and scholars who understand the hadith properly. Then we will find that Imam Mufti Taqi Usmani wrote Dars Tirmidhi in Urdu, very, very good as well. I also wrote Imam Tirmidhi Rahimullah's contribution towards Hadith. So when you study Tirmidhi Sharif, it's considered as a masterpiece. Remember that is how they made and left a legacy forever till the day of Qiyamah. May all may Allah Jalla Wala give us tawfiq to practice on all this Hadith and propagate it. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen.